So I think what's confusing for a lot of, I'm going to say like regular people, right, that maybe don't have a background um, in research or maybe they didn't go to college or maybe they're just not proficient in sex and gender. Um, They haven't spent a lot of time there because they're busy, whatever the reason is. Can you, I guess this might be a hard question, but can you explain how to properly look at like like statistics or um or data because i find that you can manipulate it to kind of prove whatever argument you want so when it comes to sex for example um i have had deborah De- dr deborah so on a couple of times and she does like a really really great job in her book in describing all of these categories, but it's really hard for me personally to ret- retain. So if I go into a conversation, I would have to refer to it um, to find, I guess, like my argument or like the basis of why I think these things. So if you can take research that says there's only two sexes, but then I've also heard that people are saying there's a research that shows that there's multiple sexes because of variance. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So th- there's a lot of confusion out there. Like you'll get some arguments that'll say, you know, there's five sexes or six because they'll look at just your sex chromosomes and they're like, well, we have XX and XY. And that's what people are taught in school is referring to males and females. But then they'll, you know, point out there's like people with Klinefelter syndrome or Turner syndrome. And there's they have sort of these variations of their sex chromosomes. You can be XXY or XYY or X and have no other accompanying XX chromosome. Um but I guess the the fundamental flaw in a lot of these definitions, and you'll also see definitions like hormonal definitions saying, you know, the level of testosterone is maybe how we can define someone's sex, or they'll try to define sex based on what are called like secondary sex characteristics, like how your body sort of looks in terms of your overall body shape, uh, if you have breasts or not, if, you know, you're uh, how fats deposited over your body, if you have facial hair. They'll try to use all these like sex related characteristics Mm -hmm. and they'll try to say that that is what biological sex is fundamentally or that, you know, there's no real good way that all these things kind of interact in a complex way. And so we can't really make any decisive uh, conclusion on anyone's sex. It's just sort of we can just sort of pick and choose all these different categories and then amalgamate them. And that's sort of where what your sex is in some weird way. Um, What they're failing to to really get at is the fact that your biological sex, while it's influenced by, you know, your chromosomes, these things guide the development of bodies. When we're talking about what somebody's sex is, uh, we're talking about basically the, the the type of reproductive anatomy that they have that is organized around the production of either large or small gametes or sex cells like sperm Mm -hmm. and eggs. Okay. So this is true, not just in humans, this is true like across the animal kingdom. Um, you know, we can't just define sex by your chromosomes because there's plenty of animals that have sexes, males and females, that don't have like a chromosomal determined sexes. So for instance, many reptiles, they determine their sex based on the temperature that they're incubated at. Um, and in, others, in some birds, you know, the, the male, the females are the hetero uh chromatic sex, meaning they have like the two different chromosomes that determine their sex. Um, But those are sort of developmental ideas. Those are mechanisms that produce sexes. But fundamentally, we're looking at your reproductive anatomy that's constructed around the production of gametes. This is true in humans and reptiles and plants, many amphibians. Um, And this is sort of how, how nature has, has, has evolved basically to have these, this, these sexual reproducing species um, there's a little more confusion when you actually sort of want to get under, understand the sex of a single individual. Um, I like to sort of look at it at two levels. We can talk about what biological sex is in sort of a conceptual way when we're looking at a population. And that's more to do with, you know, the males are the ones that produce sperm. The females are the one that produce ova. Um, but when we're actually looking at an individual and saying, like, what is your sex? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little more complicated than that because... You know, for instance, males don't even produce sperm until they go through puberty. So if they're not producing sperm when they're in adolescence or a baby, you know, you'll get the activists say like, well, aren't they they not a male then? And so this is sort of why we have to look at just the anatomy that's sort of built around. the Like the ability to. Uh, Yeah, the the ability to whether or not you ever are able to actually produce them. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you can some people grow up and they have, you know, a genetic uh, 
um, abnormality or something that makes it so they're they're sterile or they don't produce eggs or they're born without a without ovaries or you know they um, a lot of the internal re reproductive anatomy is non-existent or or um, sort of compromised in some way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're ultimately looking at sex as sort of a phenotype or the outcome of development rather than like the mechanisms that usually guide this process. So I hope that's that's sort of clear. Um, maybe we can go into it more if you if you need to. No, I think I think that's pretty clear. So when it comes to the argument, um, I wish I remembered the the percentage. It was really really small, but there, uh, Deborah outlined it in her book as well. She was saying that there's a small percentage of people that can actually produce both gametes. Uh, maybe I'm recalling that incorrectly. Um, are you familiar with that? So to my knowledge, there's never been an instance of a human that can actually produce both gametes. There's like one paper, I think from the fifties that saw that there might've been like an ovulation event in some guys, like one of his testicles that had ovarian tissue or something, Okay. but they weren't, he wasn't functional. He was a functional uh, male. He was a fertile male. And there may have been sort of in a partial ovary that he had uh, okay. like an ovulation event, but this could not have res resulted in actual, uh, you know, having a, a pregnancy or anything. He didn't have the rest of the anatomy for that. Um, you can get individuals that are intersex and they're sort of, um, sort of, it's, it's defined as being sexually ambiguous in some way or having a mismatch between sort of your internal reproductive anatomy and the way you appear on the, on the outside. Mm -hmm. But this is like a super small percentage of the population. We're talking one out of every 5,000 individuals is born where the doctors are, you know, unsure what mm -hmm. the individual sex is. And this doesn't really... Uh, call into question the whole idea of there being two sexes because um, you know sex is f fundamentally defined by the propensity to produce certain types of gametes and there's only two gametes there's only sperm and ova so you can talk about there being an intersex individual where they might have sort of an intermediate phenotype mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that they're like a third sex because there's not like a third gamete for them to produce okay uh, so that's sort of the way I look at it. I, I use an analogy sometimes of like flipping a coin where we can say that, um, you know, coin faces, they don't come in mixtures. It's either heads or tails. But there have been studies with sort of like flipping a, a nickel where one out of every, I think, 6,000 flips it'll land on its edge, which is pretty close to the rate of, of intersex individuals. But just because you might have like an edge result doesn't mean that heads and tails now exist on a spectrum or that, you know, the heads and tails doesn't exist or something. It doesn't, like, it doesn't destroy those categories. It just means that maybe there are some individuals that are sort of intermediate. And that's completely fine because biology can be complex. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't, doesn't mean that, you know, we remove the other categories because uh, there might be sort of a, uh, some instances where the sex might not be entirely clear. Mm -hmm.